labels on me You used to call me the top You put me up on a throne You let me fall with a drop I got what was coming to me Just like the sting of a bee uh, this is Stephen Dare from Metro Jacksonville, and I'm sitting here with Andy Dean, who is the young, uh, up-and-coming rising star of the right on talk radio. Uh, thanks for taking out I your time, I prefer superstar, not oh. star. Well, okay, well, you'll earn that super at some point, I'm sure. I just want to be appropriately labeled. So let's let's do a little bit of background. I you know I went and saw your show with a uh, God that guy from Atlanta, the Boar Bortz guy, Neil Bortz. I've heard of him. Neil Bortz. Yes. And Carl Rove, um, uh-huh. the architect. Yes, of something I'm mm-hmm. sure. Mm-hmm. So I very boring show except for when you were there. So I, like I felt like maybe there's something happening on the right that's worth listening to. So I'm very impressed with uh, your arguments and wanting to talk about policy, not wanting to get into the personal slams. And so I just wanted to find out a little bit more about who are you? Where'd you come right. from? Okay, no, absolutely. And I'm an open book, uh, except for the stuff I don't want to tell you, in which case I'm not going to tell you. Well, we'll just make it up. Right. Okay, so, you know, look, I'm a conservative and I'm young. I'm 30 years old. But I think that the way that we can win people over, especially liberals and independents, over to our side, because it's an important side to be on, because Barack Obama, Obama, I'm going to slam him already. How quickly did I do that? That was like nine seconds. Oh, it's okay. We'll just edit it out. Okay, right, right. That, uh, uh, you know, he's spending us into oblivion. But the point is this, is that conservatives have logic and reason on our side. And the more that we can talk about the facts and statistics, the better we can make our arguments, as opposed to just, you know, resorting to bomb throwing like an Ann Coulter. I'm not like that. I want to win through the power. Power persuasion. I grew up a debater in high school. I take what I do very seriously. I got a political science degree at Harvard University. So I'm a policy guy. I just happen to be a good entertainer and I'm funny as well. That's why my radio program works. But at the end of the day, the core of it has to be about advancing the argument. It has to be about new knowledge because the only way I'm going to compete, because the conservative talk radio landscape is extremely brutal and competitive. And the reason why I've been able to get ahead and have the fastest growing radio program in the country is because my content is better. Because I read the policy, I read the Obamacare health care legislation, and I can tell people why the liberals are so dangerous, but I do it through reason and argumentation as opposed to bomb throwing because it's less intellectual and it's easier to do. Well, and uh, let's get to the politics in a second. Sure. Um, and I appreciate that. Now, I wonder, who are you? Where are you from? Uh, I feel like Stuart Smalley. I'm Andy Dean. I'm proud. I'm good enough. I can do this. Awesome. Okay, no, I grew up in South Florida. I was born in Boynton Beach, which is between West Palm Beach and um, Fort Lauderdale. I went to high school in Fort Lauderdale. So they're all, you know, little coastal communities. Mm-hmm. Uh, I went to high school, as I said, in Fort Lauderdale. I was a debater. I won the U.S. National Debate Championships, as I like to brag about. And uh, how old are you? How did you get into Harvard? Tell me a little bit about your background. What do your parents do? Uh, my dad's a doctor. My mom writes for Florida Design Magazine. Wow, that's kind of fun. Yeah. And uh, how did I get into Harvard? I <laughs> had good grades. I had no family connections. None of my family ever went to Harvard. And what really helped were two things. I was a national debate champion, as I already mentioned seven times, uh, in commentary speaking. And then I did a program, a military program, run by the American Legion called Boys State which they invite 500 kids at high school age up to the state program in Tallahassee. And from there, they select two people to go to the national program to meet the President of the United States. So I went from Boys State, and I won that, and I went to Boys Nation, where I got to meet President Clinton, which was great. And then I had good grades, a good SAT score, and I'm handsome, and I slept with the admissions director, and that's how I got into Harvard. Wow, so the traditional way. That's how I got in the traditional way. (laughs) So um, how old were you when you went to Harvard? Uh, I was like 18 through 22, the typical age. Maybe I was held back a year, so maybe I was 19 to 22. Was it a good experience? I liked it. It was very cold. But, uh, I, I mean, not cold as in people were mean. Well, that that too. But it was physically, uh, the temperature was cold. Didn't you like the diversity of the campus, though? There is diversity there, except for one type, intellectual diversity. Hmm. You can find a half Norwegian, half Alaskan, half South African. Well, I guess that's three halves, but they had that there too. Mm -hmm. But the one thing that they don't have are conservatives. So I I would stand alone. You have a couple of the types of like, you know, the great grandson of, um, 
you know, William McKinley or, you know, Martin Van Buren. So you have those types, but you don't really have forward thinking young conservatives. The university lends itself to very progressive liberal thinkers. And I noticed uh, myself becoming more conservative as I realized that I disagreed with everybody around me. And then, of course, September 11th happened my sophomore year, and that's when I became even more to the right because I, I felt like when it came to national security, when liberals or progressives are talking, I, I just want to gouge my eyes out with a cocktail fork. So you were 19 or 20? When what? When, when September 11th. That happened, happened September 11th, 2001. I turned 20 the previous summer, so I was 20 years old. So quite young. Yeah, well, I guess if 20 is young. Yeah. Well, I mean, from 45, it's That's all very relative, young. right? Yeah. If you're four years old, 20 is old. Now, so Harvard, and you've had this kind of like iconoclastic life, though, haven't you? You managed to uh, be a conservative boy at Harvard, mm-hmm. um, debate champion, mm-hmm. and then Trump. How did you go from Harvard to Trump? Sure. So uh, The Apprentice came on my senior year, and I thought it was a fascinating program. So. I went online and I said, how do you get on the show? And they said, you make a video, but in the video, they don't want you to tell them who you are. You have to show them who you are, which is a great, that's all they said about the video. So I got, uh, I asked Jesse Ventura, who was teaching a class at Harvard on third party politics. He was a visiting professor. I begged his assistant to do a videotape, just a three minute videotape with me. And they said, no, I asked four times. They still said no. So I waited until he left his office one day because I noticed he left his office at the same time every day. Some people call this stalking. It's not. It's just being thorough. <clears throat> and I waited for him to leave and I walked him from his office to his car and I said, Jesse, I'm a huge fan when you were wrestling WWE and all that. And he said, oh, that's cool. And I said, look, I want to do this tape for The Apprentice. I tried to go through the front door. I begged you many times and, and your assistant said no. So could I just get three minutes of your time? And he's like, ah, he's like, when can we do this? And my friend jumps from a bush with a video camera. And I said, how about now? And then I did my tape walking Jesse Ventura from his office to his car. That got the attention of Mark Burnett, who produces the program. They got like 100,000 videotapes. They send 50 people to LA. Then they interview everybody, IQ tests, blood tests, that whole deal, psych exams. And then uh, from those 50, they pick 16. Those 16 people go on the TV show. Now, the TV show started in April or May, uh, or beginning of May of my senior year. So I had to drop out of college to go on The Apprentice, but they sent my exams, which was very, very difficult because they didn't want to do that. But they sent uh, a final exam to uh, the program, and I took it on the show. One of the, the contestants was my proctor, and I graduated on the TV show. Wow. Yeah. So that was my story. But look, I mean, it all sounds, you know how life is. In retrospect, everything sounds like it was a plan. But, you know, I, I, all the bad parts of my bi- biography, I leave out. No, as but, my voice cracks. But, but don't you don't you find that, like, there's always, like, that personality that meets this person. And, you know, you sound like the young Indiana Jones of the right, right? You know, no, when cool. I grew he up, a cool, I, gotta get I a hat had like Jesse that. the Body Ventura as right. my mentor. And then I ran into, you know, it's been kind of, it seems like, from the outside, looking at just, you know, uh, the information, that you had kind of a charmed life. Would you say that? I have. Well, look, I think the thing I got luckiest with is my parents because you can't pick your folks, you know, and some people have terrible parents and other people have good parents. And I just got lucky in that regard uh, because my dad was always very cool. I was also the fourth of four boys. So they kind of let me do my own thing because they were very tired and I don't blame them, but they were wonderful parents and they always believed in hard work and education. So there's a, you learn as a kid by not what your parents say, but, but what they do. You watch them and, and you just through osmosis. And my parents are very hardworking, very intelligent. And they were just good people. So Single, married, robot? Me? Oh, my parents are still married. I'm single. You're single? Yeah. And 30? What does a robot mean? Well, I mean, sexless without, so, without any need. For- single slash robot. Single slash robot, excellent. Yeah. Um, and what do you do when you're you're living in L.A.? I do. I live uh, in L.A. and then our office is in Sherman Oaks. We broadcast out of. So the way that my deal works, I'm with Premier Networks, and Premier Networks has four conservative talkers. They have Glenn Beck from nine to noon. They I've have Rush, Rush Limbaugh from noon to three. They have Sean Hannity from three to six, and now I'm their six to nine guy. So hopefully I survive. So it seems like you went from South Florida to Harvard to TV to L.A. No, so really... I worked for Trump in between. I worked for Donald for over five years in New York and Los Angeles. What did you do for him? Uh, I did a lot of things for Donald. Uh, Donald is interesting in that it's not a normal corporation in the sense that if you're friendly with Donald, which that happened by ha- happenstance and that I was in the TV show with him and they filmed that TV show, you know, it's a long period of time. So you really get to know him. And so he offered me a job right after that. And so I worked just very closely with him. So I did financial work. I did marketing work. Uh, I did real estate work. And then after about two years, I moved to LA to help run one of his companies. And I did that for a couple of years. But I missed, I loved working for him. And he was a good boss. He was good to me. Uh, I miss politics. I always wanted to get into politics. That was my major in college. I was always interested in politics, public service. 
uh, and I always had an opinion on everything. And so I, I also can, you know, conveniently like talk radio and I wanted to have an impact. And, and what better way than talk radio? Because look, if you're a state senator or a state or a congressman, all these people are fighting to get on talk radio to get their message heard. And I said, let's cut out the middleman. I want to do that. And I just got very lucky in the sense that I started at WSB in Atlanta. And then after some time and I filled in, well, I didn't start with my own show originally. You have to fill in on weekends, which I did a lot. I filled in, uh, I used to fly at my own dime to fill in on weekends. And then I filled in for Herman Cain, who's obviously now, when I filled in for Herman Cain, nobody knew Herman Cain. They're like, you're filling in for who? And now I say I fill in for Herman Cain and they're like, ooh, you must be special. Mm-hmm. And then I filled in for Neil Bortz and then finally WSP gave him on show. And then I started filling in for national people and I filled in for a guy named Jason Lewis who was with Premier Networks. He was the guy before me and he was demanding too much money. He thinks he's Rush Limbaugh or something. He's not that good. He's very, he's below average, his program. And my, I was more intelligent. I was younger and better looking than him. So they gave me his contract and they fired him and they hired me because I filled in for him. Never let somebody competent fill in for you. Now, you know, I always wondered, um, have you seen the movie Born Rich or the 2%? Yeah, it was the Jamie Johnson. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. His aunt is I wasn't here. in the top 1%. No, I wasn't. But it, of all those people, uh, the most like well-balanced person seems to be the Trump daughter. Yes, she is. Is she really that way? She is. Uh, she, I think because Donald raising his kids, it was always about work. And I think when you force your kids, and, and force is not a pejorative negative word, I think it's a positive word. When you make your kids work from age 12 or 13, by the very nature of them getting out and doing those things and making mistakes, it's very important. And, and they were always working those kids. And Ivanka, she really works hard. Don Jr., they're good kids. They're smart. And uh, Donald, I'd say his biggest accomplishment, and he'll, he'll admit this, is being a good dad. Because, uh, look, he's he's had his ups and downs. He's had multiple wives, whatever, but he's a great dad. And it's true. That is a fact. Well, I mean, it just she just came across so very down to earth and mm-hmm. so very clear she about all it. the money. Yeah. Yeah, she gets it. So uh, lots of liberal environments, and you're mm-hmm. the conservative. So how has that been for you? I mean, L.A., Harvard. It's extremely liberal. Harvard's extremely liberal. Yeah. Uh, you know, I've always, I, my hero growing up was always Bill O'Reilly. In the sense that every it's the, the media will label him as this wow well, conservative, you know, just like the media labels Howard Stern. You know, I've always those have been my two broadcasting heroes. Mm-hmm. I always like Howard Stern because he's an independent thinker. Now I don't agree with his politics, but he's extremely funny. You never know what he's going to say next, and he's extreme. If you listen to Howard Stern, now there are people who think oh he's into strippers and all that crazy stuff, but behind all that, four hours a day, he's 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 brilliant. His mind is brilliant, and it's the same way with Bill O'Reilly. They both have brilliant minds, except they're extremely different people. Well, now O'Reilly I've always liked Harvard educated as well. Well, he went to the Kennedy School for a one-year graduate program. He went to BU undergrad, mm-hmm. O'Reilly. Uh, but O'Reilly, I, I view very much like Stern in that they're not afraid to think and say what they, they believe in. Except O'Reilly, I identify not with Stern's politics, but with O'Reilly's politics. But I identify with Stern almost as an entertainer. But I don't consider myself an entertainer. I consider myself a politician who happens to be on the radio. But back, back to O'Reilly, if I could. Uh, I love his talking points memo in the sense that it's not just the conservative talking point stuff. He makes you think differently. He breaks things down concise, intelligently. And I've always admired his brain. So if there's any brain that I envy, it's Bill O'Reilly's brain. How do, so let's get to the politics. Because I have a much better body. Because, uh, you know, I feel like there's definitely been a watermark change maybe two or three times over the past two decades. You're a good still- interviewer, by the way. I feel comfortable. I- so I feel... You know what I mean? Certain people have interviewing skills that make you uncomfortable, and certain people have good interviewing skills, and you're good. You're allowing me to be me, which means you have a talent. Well, no, it's just you being you. It's like they're not. Maybe I'm the talented one. My people already know what I think, and they don't know what you think. Yeah, but so. you've got a very relaxed affect. Your cadence, if you will, is, is very good. That's from being in the South and being charming, which is I have Is that where you grew spades. up? Where'd you grow up? I grew up here. In Jacksonville. In oh, so Jacksonville. you're born. So you've got street cred, which I don't have in Jacksonville yet. Oh, I've got all kinds of cred. Right. It's like crazy how much cred you I have. I, I wake up every morning and I do my cred inventory and I'm like, God, I'm and so blessed. And you're just, blessed. you're overloaded. And uh, now, can I borrow some of your cred at lower interest rates? Well, you can probably just borrow it for free. I want to get a government back loan of your cred and then I'll just default on it. Oh, get well, bailed then, out. well, then you'd have to be on Wall Street, wouldn't you? Hmm. Wow. Touche. So, that was quick. <clears throat> yeah, I'm quick. Mm-hmm. So let me, let me ask you this. Uh, the definition of what it is to be conservative. Sure. And this is, you know, I really enjoyed this about your presentation um, and and even in your show. Uh, you really want to talk about what the issues are. I, I dislike the name calling. I mean, it's funny if you're on e-entertainment, mm-hmm. but I think for politics, it should be levity, not the bulk and not the, you know, not the only thing you're talking about. And mm-hmm. I, I hate the name calling. So I, I enjoy what your take is on the issues, but I don't know what they are. Sure. So, 
you're a young conservative mm. and you seem to be like a radical um capitalist ayn randy type of a conservative mm-hmm. uh, are you an ayn rand fan well, I, the word radical anything is is always scary, but am I capitalist? Yeah, I'm proud of the way our system works. And my monologue actually in the program tonight was the reason why I love American style capitalism is half of it because it rewards people who work hard and the other half because you can fire people who are lazy and incompetent. And that is extremely important because if you look at a country like Greece or, if you know, tangentially, if you look at teachers unions, and I know that seems like two diametrically opposing things, but anytime you're in an environment where it's difficult to fire incompetent people, what happens is it breeds a, a culture of, of um, corruption and and a culture of, uh, I'm trying to think of the word, it's just a lack of productivity. And so I think America's great because if you're doing a bad job, you can be let go. And, and the reason why the Soviet commissars don't work and why Cuba and Venezuela don't work is because socialism and communism promotes a non-work ethic. It's, it's the go-along to get-along factor as opposed to the American style, which is take an extreme risk and you can get an extreme reward. And I love our system. And yeah, other people, it's called creative destruction. Other people get left on the sidelines, sure, but as a society, we are all better off, even the poor are better off because think about it. Poor well, you, people you, now, you they have sound, flat screen TVs, they have sound, iPhones. You sound absolutely convinced of that. I don't know. I, and I not only am I convinced, it's a fact. Though, it? but it's the, a fact. Uh, and it's my on. duty. No, look, you say it's it my duty. Make it a fact. Make it's it a my fact duty. It's my duty to explain it. Well, tell me. Well, what is, is you want to know about tax policy? Why no. large government is bad? Healthcare no. is bad? Obamacare is a disaster? I can tell you all of it. Let's, let's, How much time do you have? Let's, oh, I have the rest of my life. Well, but Miranda wants to get a dinner before 10, so really? we only have about 10 more minutes. Oh, really? It's, oh, has, I don't know. Has the time gone? No, it's gone yeah, by yeah. pretty quickly. Yeah. No, let, let, I just want to um, get some just basic definitions. Sure. What is conservative? What does it mean to be the Andy Dean conservative? What are your, if you had to Absolutely. lay out seven points, what are well, okay. they? Well, and, and philosophy, uh, not, the, not context. Yeah, so I, I didn't prep for the interview, but I would say conservative to me just means limited government. That It's about the people. Is that people are intelligent enough where they don't need these angels above them to decide for them how they should be living their lives. I think Milton Friedman said it best is that if we could be governed by angels, we'd all vote for that. But the problem is there are no, there's nobody out there that, that, that are angels. So capitalism is the least bad system. You have to have a government. Why? You need a defense. Okay. You need somebody to regulate disputes. You need a judicial system. You need a Congress to pass laws. We need, you know, look, we don't want poison, mercury poisoning for our kids. I get limited government. But when government becomes too large, where it's dictating 20% of the economy, which is our health care, our government is taking 60% of your money in taxes after you count income tax, state tax, gasoline tax, excise tax, all these things, that becomes a problem because then what you're doing, it's all about ambition to me, the human spirit. And the human spirit thrives when you can be an individual and you can work hard and be motivated and rewarded for that. And that's what conservatism is about. It's about limited government. And liberals deep down believe in that. They just don't understand. See, liberals, I think, have a good heart. Like, for, Let me give you an example. Okay, And I'm even going to, I think Barack Obama deep down has good intentions when he's passing Obamacare. But as they say, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Why? Because he wants to take care of everybody. He doesn't realize the unintended consequences of what you do when you're trying to do that good thing. Like, I wish we could all have health care. I also wish we could all live in a mansion. But people who understand economics and understand tax codes realize that you create unintended consequences for people to cheat the system. And that's why socialism always fails and communism always fails. Why? Because a black market develops because people want to hustle and make more than the neighbor next to him. I don't want to live and make exactly what Joe Smith down the... I want to make more than Joe Smith. And that's something that I'm not going to hide from. I'm very proud of that fact. <clears throat> All right, so limited government. Limited and government, belief, I think, is the and, number one. And, and I'm proud of the, that I just thought of that. But limited government's number one. I'm, I'm so glad you did, man. And low taxes. And, and low taxes. Yeah, I mean, look, anybody just who works for, for a living, and that's why a lot of students are liberals, when you get your first paycheck and you see income tax, and then look, our generation, you say I'm a young conservative, I am the voice for young conservatism. Mm-hmm. Why? Because 6.2% that comes out of every... Got a, I think you've got a bullet, Andy. I, I really you. do. And I, over the past 30 years, I've been pretty good at predicting this stuff. Thanks. I think you've got a bullet. I think you're going to be in five years. Uh, what's his name? The guy from Atlanta is going to be wanting to be on your show. What's his name? Bortz? Yeah. Exactly. Okay, that guy. Yeah, we, all, can, we all forget his name. Yeah. He's competition. What are you going to do? I think he's going to be asking to be on your show. So I think it's I think it's. I don't really know if we'll let him. We'll see. Important for to, to find out what you're about. Sure. So, Limited government, low taxes. Well, these are, you know, Republican standards. Um, what is capitalism to you? It's it's about the reward mechanism. It's about giving. Look, it's about rewarding hardworking people and punishing the lazy. Mm. 
You went to Harvard and I expect better from you. Okay. So I want the... What is well, then the, maybe you tell which, me. No, you tell me. What's the definition of... What's your definition of capitalism? I mean, reward... I mean, that, that you can be Pavlovian. We can yeah. reward dogs, but we're talking about a, an economic well, system. Well, look, I so. mean, it's the free market system. I, and, I, and I mentioned it again, but limited, limited government in the sense that <laughs> there is an invisible hand out there that regulates prices. Look at Venezuela right now. Hugo Chavez is reading from the Book of Socialism. He literally two days ago just passed a law on price controls of 15,000 consumer products. Okay, what's going to end up happening in Venezuela? You can predict the future. Six months from now, if you cap prices on deodorant and soap, people are going to stop bathing because Procter & Gamble, who makes all these things, is not going to deal with fixed prices. It costs a certain amount to get lie. It costs a certain amount to do, and it, when I say lie, not L-I-E, L-Y-E. I know. Okay, if they still make soap out of that, I don't even know. They, they actually do make They it. do? Okay, yep. but then you put all these people in a factory. All these things are inputs. On top of that input, you have to have a profit. That profit Hugo Chavez thinks is a bad thing. I think that's a wonderful thing. What do you okay? think? But, but competition is what tampers down that profit to make sure that all goods are affordable. Do you think if the government regulated technology, competition but think about it. In, sociali- in socialism as well. Not really though. But it does. I mean, there you're, it's a limited form of government. Well, I mean, but the problem competition is, who's is, dictating the rules? If the government is... But you're, you're talking Miltonian, um, uh, Milton Friedman economics, not right. necessarily capitalism. I mean, what is but, capitalism? Okay, let's talk about you? Western science socialism because okay. it sounds like if that were your paradise... They've tried this. Okay, it's not. not, But maybe for the purpose of this argument, you want to disagree, which is fantastic. So you'll get more out of me. Okay. Look at Western style socialism. Europe has tried this. Greece has tried it. What is happening in Europe right now? The nanny state, the social safety net that, well, look, deep down, I wish that that worked. I really do. I wish I could call it a day and I could fish for a living and I didn't have to do this. I really do. So are okay? you against Because what I do is extremely stressful and I have to research 12 hours a day before I go on the air for three days. But Western South Socialism has not worked. Why? Because Europe is failing. Europe's going to collapse. That's not, that's not rocket science. That's a fact. It's happening. Well, let me ask you this then. So, um, and maybe this can help clear it up. Uh, what is an example of a successful capitalist society that you can name. America. America works. But Think you, about it. We're the most productive we, society you, in the history of time. But you just got through saying we were socialists, didn't you? No, I'm saying Barack Obama's a socialist. But he's, he's leading in the... The, the he's issue is de- this. He's desocialized the country since he's been there. No, no. Everything this I'm is, saying <clears throat> is actually... The United States has the three largest socialist programs ever initiated in the history of the world. More of those. One being Social Security, the, Medicare, and Medicaid? No, our interstate system. It's the largest program ever initiated. Oh, infrastructure. But look, I'm not saying that infrastructure programs are bad. Somebody needs to build an interstate. All what right, I'm so, saying is so you ask me, may I repeat? We can have yeah. the court reporter read it back to us. Come you on, ask me, make look, me understand this. You, make, you asked me what's the best system, and I pointed to one. The United States of America. Why though? But wait, let me finish if I could. It's the results. Because look, you can't lie about GDP, $45,000 ahead. We are by far, look at China, it's $5,000 oh, ahead. But Andy, but come look, on. The, you've got, the, no, but I'm giving you but examples, you, and I keep I getting interrupted. I know, the United I'm States of America... The United so, States of America has works. Been socialism since it the works, 30s, hasn't it? Okay, well, you're, you can look. We can we can parse down what America is. I think America is capitalist. You may think it's socialist. What I'm saying is Barack Obama. We have this ebb and flow between Republicans and Democrats. Democrats try to push us to socialism. Republicans try to, f- to push us to free market capitalism. What I'm saying is, the more that we're pushed to free market capitalism, like we were under Ronald Reagan, the better off our society is. Well, where but the where and I, I just you know there are certainly examples, uh, and you know I would nominate. India to you okay. as a perfectly capitalist, non-socialist It is, but country. it's a class. The only issue with India, and I love India, and by the way, there will be our, our friend in World War III, which is going to be the U.S., India, and Israel versus state-sponsored Islam. Oh, no, it's going to be India and China, and we're going to be on the on the outskirts of that. Hopefully, no, we'll be our next war will be with state-sponsored Islam. No. And once again, this is not the religion Islam. That's a fine religion. Everybody's equal. It's state-sponsored political Islam that forces, because remember what it's all about. That? It's all about control. Do you really believe Think that? Think about communism is about control. Nazism is about control. State-sponsored radical you know, Islam is about control. That's li- all it is. It's I, not a religion. It's control. I lived through the Cold War mm-hmm. toward, towards How the end of it. How old are you? 70? Almost. Okay. Um, I'm 45. Okay. So. You look younger than that, by the way. Oh, thank you. So do you. Yeah. But I think you are younger than 45. I'm 30, yeah. yeah. But you you have a, like, uh, yeah, you have a, a youthful spirit to you. So do you. I mean, it's interesting. Boyish. You seem intelligent, so the fact that you're liberal, I'm, I'm, I'm boggled by this. Well, I'm not necessarily you're, you're liberal. You're an enigma wrapped in a conundrum. I am a former Republican of the Reagan era. Okay. I haven't changed my mind at all, but nowadays people think I'm liberal. Right. So, but uh, where, certainly, uh, where would you and say- By the way, you know Miranda's getting mad at me. Are so you, I would say like seven totally more minutes. Getting, no, because she's starving and I, I don't feel... So is a rush. Maybe you guys should go like grab some <laughs> food. <laughs> Interesting. So, okay. But um, where where has there been a society that works with limited government and unlimited capitalism that doesn't become an oligarchy or a aristocracy? Well, see, that's the issue is that socialists always point to... that. 
flaws in capitalism in the sense that, yeah, does wealth accumulate to the top 5%? By the nature of having an unequal system, wealth is going to accumulate from the top. But what people don't realize is the top 1% in America is constantly fluctuating, and it's filled with mostly older people. Why? Because people in their 20s, 30s, and 40s shouldn't be in the top 1%. They haven't worked hard enough, except for Mark Zuckerberg. They really aren't, okay? The top 1% is made up of business owners in their late 50s, 60s, and 70s who work their entire life to build capital and build a life. Now, yeah, are there sure there are people who have inherited money who don't deserve it? It's not a perfect system, but America, for the most part, does a good job, just like our justice system. You have a guilty person like Casey Anthony that walks, but 95% of the time, our system works. It's not perfect, so what you're gonna do is to point out the couple occasions, and let me give you a perfect example of what you do. Okay, of back what in I the, do? Yeah, yeah, How do you this know is what, what you do. do. I'm asking. The alternative minimum tax came about because there were 21 millionaires in the 60s and 70s who were skipping on their taxes, and they pointed to these 21 people and said, they skipped out on their taxes, so let's come up with an alternative minimum tax. And now you know what pays the alternative minimum tax? Okay, 15% and 20% of the upper middle class pay the uh, alternative minimum tax. So everything trickles down. It's trickle down tax and you cite the top 1%, but it trickles down to the upper middle and middle class. So you'll keep pointing out flaws in capitalism and I'm in a defenseless position. I'm going to agree with you. There are flaws in capitalism. Oh no, I, It's I, the I'm most not... perfect system of a bunch of bad choices. I, I don't I don't think that capitalism is a bad thing at all. Yeah, but I... you're saying it equi- the top 5%. What about the bottom 5%? But look, the bottom 5% I, I, well, in America, let me finish. Absolutely. The bottom 5% in America have it better than the bottom bottom 5% of any society in the history of the world ever. And that's just a fact, okay? These people, even if you're living on welfare, a lot of them have cable television, well, they have access to air conditioning, free public school, free hospitals. What other society can you walk into a hospital and get stabilization care? Only in America. Well, Don actually, King was right. Actually, the Romans had it too. Uh, yeah. If you were a Roman citizen, you were taking but care look, of from Rome was pretty grave. cool. I would have liked those was. fights, the Colosseum. I'm not saying Rome was bad. Yeah, I, you know, I've got. I would have um, worn a toga, have grapes. So there's not a country you would point to once. as a successful example of limited government capitalism. I keep pointing to the same example, and see, you're, you're going to not see, not agree with me. Yeah. America's a perfect place. America's as good as it's ever going to get. Period. Well, I'm going to ask you this. Full stop. Because I've got. I feel like you know, America is a capitalism, but we've had a few hundred years of practice with this now. Mm-hmm. Um, We've been through boom and bust. The busts do not justify the booms. No, they do. That's the point. But they didn't. Well, look, we can... Because we... You can say two plus two is five all day. I'm going to disagree with you. All of the capitalist countries ended up in the same place, which was regulated capitalism, and there had to be a reason for that. I mean, what's the difference between unregulated... Okay, this is what we're, we're debating, because we keep changing the goalposts here. This is where we go wrong. Is that you think when you refer to me, if you will, because this is what the media, you're going to paint me with a brush, okay? No, I that's like That's okay. No, I that's okay. Like I like you, you may be a good painter. I know. I, look, I'm, this is, like, yeah. if it's not contentious, it's not a fun interview. I'm just yeah. having, I like well, no, you. no, no, Okay. If Relax. you like contentious, we can okay, roll. Okay, <laughs> look. All right. This is, this is the issue. You look at capitalists and you say, oh, look, capitalists believe in no rules, radical capitalists, these Milton Friedman types. That's not true, okay? We believe in semi-regulated markets, like for instance, Insider trading rules. Okay, markets, just like think of it like a football game. This is the best way to think about it. Plus, look, you guys are Jacksonville Jaguar team. Your, your, your team sucks. Okay, but does. look, I'm a Miami Dolphins fan. My team sucks this year. But look, think of it like a football game, all right? I believe in the referee and I believe in the rules, okay? But then... Let the players get on the field and play the game according to those rules. Socialism stops the, the ball every five yards and says, don't hit each other too hard. Or maybe you shouldn't be running the ball. Maybe you should be throwing the ball. What I'm saying is in football, you have the rules, you have the referees, which are the SEC and our federal government. And then you let people play the, gla- the game. And are the people going to get lose? Are the people going to get injured? Sure. But for the most part, it's a better game and competition is better in the NFL because it's unregulated. Okay, so there but, are certain rules. Isn't that a really big sure? Like, what do you mean? Aren't people going to get hurt? Uh, yeah, things? I have no problem that, with that. Isn't that a huge? It's trip? better for all of us. Why is that better? Because look, because certain it, people's society. We, it ended up you went to high school, goods. right? You yeah, went to high school. How many people were in your high school? Uh, a thousand. A thousand. Okay. Think of the bottom ten people per, in your high school, right? Sure. Okay. Do you want them driving Mercedes and running large corporations or becoming brain surgeons? Do Be I, honest. Do I want them robbing my house because they can't afford to eat? Okay, but the thing is, is that if they're honest, they should be able to afford to eat. There's food stamps, there are all these programs. Well, what like I'm we saying is in America, in America, the top 20% <laughs> of people in your high school, they should run the businesses. They're smarter. They should be the brain surgeons. They, they should run the companies. And what I'm saying is that, look, 
just like some people are born five foot two and certain people are born six foot five. Like, look, I'm an average height. I'm five nine, five ten. Okay, I wish I was six foot four, but that's life. Okay, the people who are given bigger brains should get bigger rewards to take that risk. And you're saying, look, no, no, no Andy, we should all be five foot ten. Where did that's I say against that? nature, though. What you're that saying that is absolutely we are, ridiculous. God made us inherently that's different. Absurd. He what I'm saying is diversity different. is a but good thing. But when us, it comes to brain size, no, you should say because well, what socialists believe is they believe I'm that not a socialist. No, no, but I'm saying is that they believe in so much of the social safety net that life shouldn't be rough on people. What I'm saying is the whole point of life is it's not rough on people people die people yeah. like you know i i it's I, supposed I, to be I rough to the kids out there i felt like nafta was gonna be a good thing because people it was wonderful people said hey people will retrain right, right. what what happened the displaced workers well i ended up uh in a bankruptcy practice out in indiana mm-hmm. in muncie mm-hmm. and um yeah they don't why do i know muncie india uh from the hudsucker proxy muncie muncie uh, uh no, no university you ever, the, you ever see kingpin yeah is he from muncie yeah he was Yep. Muncie. <clears throat> Muncie, Indiana. Yeah, he bowled in Muncie. Yep. Okay. So, but it turns out great that movie. they never retrained. Bill Murray was great in that movie. Because they were 50 and right. they were missing body parts from working So what are we supposed to do with these people? Too bad. Just let them starve, right? No, you don't let them starve. Well, that's what happens. See, that, it's, always, it's always so black or white. No, you, no, you, no. Okay, it's this not. is the issue about NAFTA and, and I'll get this quickly. It's called creative destruction. Free trade allows countries who are good at certain things to do those things. It allowed us to it's race the to the bottom. It's the specialization of labor. That's not true, that though. That is that's, true. We allowed for So Indonesian you're against workers. free trade, which even Democrats are in favor for in the, in the Senate. I, I'm never going to be able to turn you. No, no, okay, no. Okay, but look, I, this is I, do I feel bad for that 50-year-old factory is, worker? This is I do, but the point is this, though. Their the point where is they this, shoot though. He's on unemployment insurance. Unemployment insurance, I think, is a good thing in the short term. No, it's a great thing in the short term. labor unions ran away with their pensions. They're, they're SL. Well, I hate labor unions. So. Well, then we're on the same side on Excellent. That, right? So it means you're intelligent. But look, no, this, is, this, is, this is it, though. Okay, <clears> you're saying, Annie, do I feel compassion for that 50-year-old worker in Indiana? No, I'm No, but I do. That's the answer. It's not compassion. You should be on unemployment insurance. You need to retrain your brain. And that's life. And you're saying, oh, why does a 50-year-old have to retrain herself? Life in the NFL is tough. Let him retrain and get a new job. Uh, really? At 55? Yes. The guy with, with two fingers left is going to retrain himself. He's got to do type, it. Right? He's got to do it. Welcome oh, yeah. to America, Jack. Well, that doesn't work. Okay. Unless, and you know what John listen, Smith said? You don't work, you don't eat in this country. Yeah, that worked out. It did. So I think we, we're the greatest we country right in the to, history of time. We came right to the point of revolution. But in you the look 30s at America's problems, and I look at America's greatness. I look we at see America's two different things. And I think I'm it's a an Ronald Reagan country. glasses half full, and your glasses half empty. That's no, a difference, and we'll not. never be able to bridge this gap. Absolutely not. You're a pessimist. No, absolutely not. As a matter of fact, we should go horse riding together. Horse riding? I'm yeah. too too dangerous. I don't want to be like like Christopher Reeve. What? And I'm too. Da- I don't want to end up. I don't want to fall off. Yeah, yeah. But luckily, there's stem cell research that'll make that. I'm in favor of that, actually. Are you? Yeah. So. Last thing, I think your uh, conservative is looking intelligent. To, yeah. Thank you, I appreciate. I do it. I actually put that on my Facebook page. Thanks. I'm like, I have a De- gift. Andy Dean's kind of hot. Um, but I wish a hot girl were saying this, but that's okay. Well, it's okay. Yeah. So I'll take any comment. Miranda thinks I'm good looking, but yeah. I, I. But think then again, she's paid to say that. I hope that you look to a conservatism of the future and look at what the conservative issues are of the future mm-hmm. because I think you're still arguing in the paradigm of the past 30 years. Mm-hmm. And I well, think look, I don't think these, issue, these issues will never get old. It. Low oh. taxes and little big, little big government, it's like the hits that they keep on, you know, it's well, like that Rolling see, Stone song. It'll I, never get old. I think you can't always get what you want. I, I, I but think if you try sometimes, you'll get what you need. democracy, I think people try and tell us that we're too stupid to in, uh, elect people that represent us. Really, we're, it's a democracy. We're, we're, we're big people. We can elect mm-hmm. people to spend the money that we ask them to raise from us. Yeah. You know, I, I disagree that the government is separate from the people. So, and I don't understand where that whole meme came from. This is a democracy. It's not a uh, yep. aristocracy. Look, and it's a good country. It is. It's amazing. www.metrojacksonville.com. This is the best site on the internet. You turn the tables on me. You used to call me the top. You put me up on a throne You let me fall with a drop I got what was coming to me Just like the sting of a bee You turned the tables on me 